Hello, my name is Dimitri Peinado. Welcome to my presentation on Fourth and Prologue. And my job was to revive an old Prologue implementation written in Fourth. So that was a very exciting project. And the reason we're doing this is that we want to be able to make artificial intelligence systems in Fourth. In the past, Prologue was a very popular language for AI. It's still being used for AI today, but some other approaches are perhaps a little bit more popular. But I found myself really drawn to Prologue. And in this presentation, I'm going to cover why and also the implementation, how it works and things that I've added to the implementation and want to add in the future. So what is Prologue? It's a logic programming language is popular for symbolic artificial intelligence and expert systems. A prologue has a database that can be given facts and rules about a problem. And queries made by the user are then answered by seeing if facts and rules can be used to prove them true. Uh, so in my picture, I have an example of trying to prove if, uh, if there is an A that is the son of Lot. Prologue is a declarative language, and I consider that to be one of the key features because it makes it very high level. Uh, I would consider it to be higher level than Lisp, actually, because in Lisp you have things like car and CUDA and the variants. But in Prologue, you just have unification, which is a kind of pattern matching. The way I would describe it is if you can describe your problem, then you've probably solved it because Normally, that description is executable. So why would I combine Prologue and Forth? Well, you consider the merits of each of them. Forth is good for low-level hardware control. It has compact code, and you can use it to write virtual machines very easily, which might be useful for implementing other languages. Prologue is high level and declarative. However, interestingly, it's also very compact. I found that in a few lines, you can get a lot of power. And one of the things I like about Prologue is it models human thinking in terms of logic. Uh, humans came up with logic to try and find a formalism for how we think. And Prologue is very good at representing that. So this combination it was used by Lou Odette for experiments in space. And Prolog would be used to describe what the experiment should do, but Forth would be used to control the hardware. It seemed to be a combination that works well that can be used in uh, Don's project for robots, where you describe the rules in Prolog and the hardware controls in Forth. But we'll come to that later. So how about the implementation? How does that work? Well, Forth was used to write a virtual machine with only seven opcodes, and somehow seven opcodes is enough for Prolog. And what you do is you compile the Prolog for the virtual machine and then execute it. Now, this process is actually so easy that you can do it by hand. I have some examples on the right of comparing predicates like Heyram is the parent of lots, and you can see that the code is not very different from the representation in Prolog. It's definitely forth-like and virtual machine-like. Uh, the fourth words and the Prolog predicates are in the same dictionary, so that allows them to call each other, uh, which is really helpful, and it allows the Prolog implementation to use some of, the, some of the power that's already in Forth in terms of searching for things. So if that's implemented very efficiently, then Prolog benefits from that. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail in this presentation. Here you can read about it in uh, Odette's paper. It's titled Compiling Prolog to Forth. And it's in the Journal of Forth Application and Research 4, number 4. So 
you can read up and find more about the implementation because my work was just taking that implementation uh, as it is and just making it work for modern systems. Uh, you might also be interested in the second example I've given on the right showing that Prolog can do differentiation. So here we've represented a relation. The derivative of sine of x with respect to x is cosine of x. So in Prolog you can do this kind of thing because it's just a re relational uh, database if you like. And you see how that compiles you sine is something called a functor. A functor is sort of like a st struct in C and it, what it's saying in the compiled code is that it has one variable which is x. A pop is what is what is used to mark the end of that functor or structure. Then we have another variable which is x and then we have the cosine part. So it's once you learn the rules, it's very easy to work out how to compile stuff. So what improvements did I actually make to ADET's implementation of Prolog in fourth? Well, one is to make it 32 or 64 bit compatible because at that time, 16 bit fourth was a lot more common. And so he assumes a 16 bit fourth being available. So where I did this was to use the word cell because cell will make it independent of which platform it's on. These days we'll mostly have 32 and 64 bit machines. Another thing I did is I removed some macros that were being used. For some reason I could not get them to work with ANSI fourth systems and they were very short so I just placed the code in full at the points where the macros were used. It doesn't make the code size that much bigger. <coughs> um, I think one of the key things that I did was to add backtracking. Now backtracking can be a bit difficult to explain but the way I describe it is like doing a Sudoku puzzle. You know those ones where you have to make a guess at some point, you don't know all the numbers, so you make a guess and then you start, you continue filling out the puzzle, but eventually you find a contradiction or you, that you cannot go any further. So what do you have to do? You have to backtrack and then you have to rub out all the numbers that you filled in, going back to the original one you guessed and then try another option. So this is very common in Prolog programs and it was pretty much essential to implement it. So hopefully that makes sense. Another time I can go into more detail of how backtracking works, uh, but I was happy to be able to add this because an original is missing. And uh, finally, in the uh, journal of fourth application, the research, uh, the code was presented in screens on a piece of paper. Well, I've now extracted that and published it on GitHub and you can follow the link. So how will Prolog be used on FPGA? Well, there are actually three stacks and associated registers that can be implemented in hardware. The third one is kind of not seen as much. It's something called the trail stack. And what that does is it records all the variables that have been substituted so that they can be replaced on backtracking, as I described in a previous slide. Uh, the other two are the control stack, where basically the data goes there. Some data goes on that one variables and also the points to backtrack to, things like that. And then you have the structure stack, which is where your functors go, which are if you remember are like structs in C. And the good thing about when them going on the structure stack is that they can easily be deallocated because you just move the pointer and then you've deallocated the whole structure. So you don't have any complicated garbage collection in this implementation. Now, one thing I did wonder is if I could have an opcode for each virtual machine instruction. That would be absolutely excellent. There's only seven and it was make a very efficient implementation, but it's maybe not realistic to expect. I think it's more likely that we'll be able to microcode the instructions and that will still be very efficient because uh, it will be closer to 
the hardware so that's one of the good things and in addition uh, fourth libraries will be available because fourth will be able to call prologue and prologue will be able to call fourth because they're using the same dictionary for triune os and ai in general the things that Prolog will be able to offer or perhaps setting the goal level for Triune OS. So this could be used for pathfinding where Prolog has worked out how to get from one point to another point and it would set the compass heading for Triune OS. So the robot would then go towards the destination needed but meanwhile Triune OS itself would be able to do things like obstacle avoidance. So you can delegate that to the OS. Another thing that could happen is Triune OS creates facts based on the sensor data. So maybe it knows that there's a wall beside it or something in front of it or some other fact. And Prolog could then logically reason about its environment. And I think this will be an interesting thing uh, to do. I've mentioned the collision avoidance again there. It's basically the concept of having a part of the system that can reason at a higher level as we do, while the other part does the things we tend to do subconsciously. So what further improvements are there to make? Well, the first one is, I think functor unification was not actually implemented. So you cannot have unification for those nice structures. If I remember correctly, I have to double check on what that actually means because I found in practice that that part of code has not come up. So I need to identify that case. Uh, one thing that would be really, really nice to have is an interpreter and compiler, not just a virtual machine. Right now you have to hand compile stuff and then execute it, which is not ideal at all. I'd like to make lists and strings native data types. At the moment you only have const, which is if you remember the examples before, names like lot and uh, hey ran, kind of just words, numbers, and functors, which are the structures. But lists and strings don't really exist in this implementation. You tend to represent them using functor. I think adding types for lists and strings would make the processing a lot more efficient. And then we could work on having an efficient representation, meaning that each character of a string should use only eight bytes. I think this implementation it is not so efficient with space. It will probably still work on embedded devices, but if we want to get really, really good performance, we can improve that more. And these things work together to make natural language processing systems possible. I know that's something that Don has really wanted to achieve. Uh, with our systems. And one thing, after saying all of this about Prolog, is whether we really need to use Prolog because we could probably write equivalent programs in fourth. For example, we can write uh, words that kind of mimic natural language or perhaps a natural language parser. We might be able to implement a database and we might be able to implement a logic theorem prover Together, those may, might have the equivalent of Prolog, but if the user only needs a part of that, then they have the option just to use that small piece as well. We don't know. This is something we'll have to investigate in the future. I think starting with this Prolog implementation is a good starting point. And finally, I'd like to recursively apply intelligence. So this is the sort of meta level thinking where uh, we don't just have Prolog, which can be intelligent, but we apply Prolog to the implementation so that it compiles uh, in an intelligent way, it executes in an intelligent way, it uses resources in an intelligent way. At the moment, I don't really know what that will involve. I think the first step would be to write a good meta interpreter, but I'm excited about this part because if we can make all the pieces of our system intelligent, then I'm hoping that together it will make a really smart machine. Finally, I'd like to acknowledge some who have really helped me on this project. So I would like to give my thanks to Don Golding, who encouraged me to do this project and really encouraged me to make this presentation. 
Uh, he has made me keep going at times when I felt like I didn't have much and kept me feeling excited about this new area, if you like, for fourth and AI. I'd also like to thank Professor Ilya Tarasov and Dr. Ting for helping me on the FPGA side of things. They had some criticisms to make at the start, which is really helpful because I think we needed to either justify our choices or make a different choice based on what others are doing. And those two have really helped us. Uh, Ting is currently working along with us as well on this, and we are so grateful for that. And finally, I'd like to mention Marcus Triska from Meta Level. He helped me get started with Prologue and to understand his capabilities. He's been very friendly and always answered questions I emailed to him. So thank you, Marcus Triska.